So, I've been going on a roll, rereading the good old Harry Potter series, and look what I've reached. Hello, fellow bookquesters, it is I, Aaron the Bookquester, and today I got this great book, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, by J.K. Rowling herself, and well, let's get right on to it. So, Harry Potter is in summer vacation, in the boring house of the dead, so he's being tortured as usual, and then suddenly, an elf appears, a house elf that works like a slave for a wizard. And that elf, which, whose name is Dobby, says that Harry Potter shall not go to Hogwarts this year. And Harry Potter's like, what, why? And then Dobby causes a lot of trouble, which makes Harry become locked in the room. Which is, you know, kind of hilarious. And then, however, Ron, Fred and George, riding a bewitched car, a flying bewitched car, rescues Harry from the horrible Dursleys, and Harry says, See you next summer! And they all fly away, away, and they go. Which is great. And then they go to the Weasley's house, and Harry Potter stays at the Weasley's for the rest of the summer, and then Hogwarts starts. In Hogwarts, the new defense of the defense against the dark arts teacher is Gilderoy Lockhart, who doesn't really seem to know what he's doing. But you know, I don't know what's wrong with him. And meanwhile, things are getting a bit out of hand. In in red words, it says on the wall, the Chamber of Secrets is once again open, and and it's kind of creeping us out, and people are getting petrified or completely frozen in time, it seems, by someone or something. And Harry Potter and Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger is determined to find out who or what it is. Then they suspect Malfoy. They decide that they were going to brew a very dangerous potion known as a Polyjuice Potion to drink it, morph into a different person, namely Crabbe and Doyle, who are, you know, who are Ma Draco Malfoy's best friends, turn into them and talk to Draco and, and basically just casually slip it into the conversation to see if Draco Malfoy is truly the heir of Slytherin, therefore the guy who's been petrifying everyone. And they do just that. They manage to brew the, brew the potion, they drink it up, and they try, they try, they try to ask Draco Malfoy if he's the heir of Slytherin, and they find out that... God dang it, he isn't. He wants to know and he wants to help the heir of Slytherin, but he isn't the heir of Slytherin, which is, you know, dang it. So, so who is the true heir, uh, heir of Slytherin? Meanwhile, Harry Potter finds a diary that seems to be being flushed down a toilet, and he looks at it and there's really nothing in it. And then Harry Potter writes something in the diary, and he realizes the diary is somewhat sentient. The soul or some sort of memory of this guy named Tom Riddle who lived a couple who lived who was at Hogwarts 50 years ago well this Tom Riddle he's, he's a little bit of his memory is within the pages so when Harry Potter writes in and asks a question it can answer through the well you know through the nice little through the nice little pages and Harry Potter asks about the beast about this, about this chamber secrets being opened again, and it's it's not looking good. And Tom Riddle says that last time, and he shows him Harry a vision that he had caught Hagrid with some sort of creature that he was pretty sure killed all the people of those people fifty years ago when the chamber secrets was open, and therefore he thought that Hagrid for a while, Harry and Ron. And, and Hermione thought that Hagrid was the one. And meanwhile, you know, our dear Harry's listening, hearing these disembodied voices while he's walking around in the hallways, which is even more mysterious. It's driving us crazy. And then, while they're walking, suddenly Hermione says that, I think I know what's causing this, and starts to run towards the library. And the next thing, next thing they know, Hermione Granger is petrified as well, alongside with another Ravenclaw girl. And it's not looking good. And then after that, they start to try they they start to try to think about what could possibly have petrified all these people. And then finally he 
he, they find out that Harrymon is clutching something, a piece of paper perhaps. So they manage to pry it out, and it talks of a basilisk, a beast, a huge serpent that can kill people just by looking at them, or if their eyes meet. And if their eyes meet, meets through a meets through some sort of reflective surface, such as water, a mirror, or something. Well, the basilisk can't kill you; it'll only petrif petrify you. So now they know that this basilisk is probably the 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 serpent in the in the set in the Chamber of Secrets, and we realize that this serpent has been moving around in the plumbing of Hogwarts, preying on the mudbloods or the or the Muggleborn, you know, the, the the wizards and witches that are born from a Muggle family. And now, this is just plain racism, honestly. But a lot of pure blood wizards are really serious about, it, namely, you know, the Slytherin people like Draco Malfoy. And basically, the Basilisk League is just doing what Slytherin, one of the four original heads of Hogwarts, wanted. And yeah, the Basilisk is crazy. And then they find out that apparently the heir of Slytherin has captured Ginny Weasley. And Harry guesses that the entrance to Chamber of Secrets is where Myrtle, Groaning Myrtle, the girl that died to the Beast 50 years ago, the toilet. That's where the entrance was. And so together they manage to enter and they find they find Ginny unconscious. And they also find Tom Riddle with the diary. And Tom Riddle reveals that he is no other than Lord Voldemort, or at least a memory of him. And he is absolutely crazy, and he just wants to talk to Potter. And then after talking to him, he tells the devilish Baslake to kill him. Then suddenly, a phoenix and the sorting hat appears. And Harry doesn't know what to do. I mean, the phoenix is doing something, but not much. And he looks at the sorting hat and he puts his hand in it. Maybe he could pull out something. And then suddenly, the hat seems to crumple around his hand. And he pulls out a gleaming sword. And using the sword, he managed to slay the basilisk. And then Tom, with Harry's wand, tries to kill him. However, they're in acting with instinct. He grabs one of the basilisk's fangs and stabs the diary. And Tom Riddle dies. Or the memory of him anyway. And it's all over and finally another Hogwarts term is over and the good guys have won again. So as I'm rereading the book, like you know how I've been reading a lot of like more lower scale fantasy books and I think those are great, but I read this best selling series once again this week while I've been reading this best selling series again and I've kind of realized why this book is far more popular than others. It's a really good combination of plot, of character, and of these really suspenseful moments and mystery, and all in all, it's really perfect combination that creates this wondrous book that you cannot take your hands off of. And that is why I just read, finished reading this book. And it is a great book. If you haven't read it, you've been obviously living under a rock for the past three decades. And like always, your book quester, Aaron the book quester. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Well, yeah, definitely read the book. If you haven't already, of course.